Thank you, councillors. Welcome to our extraordinary meeting of council to debate the Celtic Manor Resort and to undertake a required review of the council's political balance arrangements. I also extend a warm welcome to those members of the public who are in attendance in the gallery uh, and or watching from other rooms within the town hall and at home via the internet. So, I right, please be seated. Item 1 is declarations of interest. Members are asked to consider whether you have any dis disclosable pecuniary and or any other relevant interest in connection with any matters to be determined at this meeting, and if so, to declare it and to, dis the, to, sorry, and to state the nature of such interest. Um, so may I begin? I will begin by declaring a personal interest in item number 3, Celtic Manor Resort, insofar as I am a council-nominated trustee of the West Kirby Charity, which owns land in the area that would be affected by the proposed resort. Are there any other declarations? <coughs> Councillor David Elgerson. Yes, Mr. Mayor, the same thing. I am also a member of the West Kirby Charity Board to make a decision associated with land that might eventually be used to council Thank you. Sorry, just a point of order, because of that, am I committed to a vote, I can speak on this obviously, but am I committed to vote in connection with this uh, motion, boot motions? Provided it isn't a direct financial interest, so the charity isn't going to have its finances directly affected by this. So if, if they have a business partner, for example. The, the finances of the charity, if yes. this was to go ahead, obviously the finances charity would benefit from whatever came from that. I'm just asking your opinion of this, whether I'm allowed to vote or not in this situation. Whether so, I'm allowed to take part in the debate. Uh, so, if, if the charity is going to directly benefit uh, in the way that you said, uh, then yes you would, because there is a conflict of interest between your role as trustee, uh, which usurps <laughs> in simple terms, you're saying I can't take part in, in the motion. Yes. The motion. Yeah. In that case, I hereby resign the trustee of the West Kirby Charity. <laughs> and uh, I will do the same tonight, with the meeting effect. Councillor Ian Lewis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can I ask you a question of the head of law, please? Can the head of law please advise whether any councillor who has received hospitality from Celtic Manor needs to declare that hospitality at this meeting? Can we please have that window closed? Thank you. If councillors have received uh, direct expenses in terms of uh, sponsorship or uh, payment of their duties as a councillor uh, by Celtic Manor, uh, then yes, that will be an interest. But not hospitality? Uh, not in the ordinary course of business, no. We are on declarations. Are there any further declarations? Mr. Mayor, just, just for absolute clarity, I know a number of members of the planning committee or, or future members of the planning committee, and just to, for the public's interest, uh, the public solicitors have written to uh, about that, and it, it's not necessary for potential members of the planning committee to declare an interest. But I think all members have seen a copy of that note, so just for clarity, given the, the, the nature of the, the item. Item two is Mayor's announcement. Sorry, Mr. Mayor, at this, at, I was going to ask this later, but as people are asking questions about the end item three, I'll ask them now. Uh, given that Council knew well in advance about the public interest, 
in this matter and has done for a number of months. And the amount of people in the public gallery, the amount of people in committee rooms, one and I'm assuming two, should this council not have been set up to be heard in the civic hall yeah. where all members of the public yeah. Yeah. Conversation today with Councillor Blakely when we met Councillor Blakely made a request uh, that this meeting be held in the civic chamber. Uh, the response was uh, that it would take a full day to set it up for webcasting, uh, that uh, the web quality of the webcasting, uh, which is designed to allow members of the public to uh, take direct views and participate, that's the purpose of it, uh, would be severely affected. Uh, and indeed the meeting would have to be run in such a way as that there will be uh, a microphone passed around members hand to hand. Uh, the civic chamber will be wholly inappropriate for uh, you to be able to have a meeting uh, enabling full access through the webcam uh, and site as it is. Uh, I'm afraid you are restricted by the design of this chamber. Uh, this chamber has a public gallery that is unfortunate uh, in that it is limited in size. Uh, thus, uh, the best we've been able to do is to create overflow rooms for members of the public to actually be here uh, in the building. Very poor, very poor. That's shocking. Obviously, with a, with a long run up, uh, we could have hired some kind of hall, the floor wall, or somewhere like that, uh, and paid uh, a company to come in and set up a webcast. Uh, but as the conversation took place uh, only in the middle of this morning, uh, clearly that's not possible. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Perhaps the council will learn from that. And we were told when this equipment was installed it was portable, usable anywhere. Clearly that isn't the case. We weren't told there was rooms that weren't exempt from, from that use. Uh, I would suggest that the council uh, set up equipment in the Civic Hall to make it more accessible to the public, to, to engage with the public more openly and transparently. It, because going forward, I see a lot more people attending these council meetings uh, than less. Here, here. Thank you Obviously, made that an investment decision for this uh, council. Can, can, just, just on that, is that an investment decision for this council to make, Mr. McCall's, or is it an investment decision for cabinet to make? Cabinet. Cabinet. So it's a decision for Cabinet, not Council? Yes. Thank you. With the budget, we've got the council. Okay. Moving to my next point, uh, Mr. McCall, if we could ask you as head of law, could you confirm that this Council, when debating this matter, isn't in a position to make a decision on it? And the only people who can make the decision on the Celtic Mother Resource are the 10 Cabinet members. Uh, this may be helpful for members and certainly helpful for members of the public uh, that the way that local government is currently organised uh, within Wirral is that there is an executive system of governance. That means that for 95% of the decisions that are carried out uh, in exercise of the functions of the council fall to the cabinet and therefore uh, this chamber and meetings in this chamber, uh, with a very few exceptions, are discussing what this council believes, the opinion that it has based on the information that is before it as a result of its debate, uh, and can do no more than make a recommendation as a consultee to the cabinet. So, if there are no more declarations, I go on to Mayor's announcements, item two. Um, first of all, apologies. I have apologies from my chaplain, the Reverend David Chester, who's unable to be with us at this extraordinary meeting, and from councillors Ron Abbey and Pat Hackett. Are there any further apologies? Councillor Kenny. Yes, Mr Mayor. Can you add uh, Councillor Jill Wood to that list, please? Thank, Thank you. you. Now to electronic voting. A reminder.
Cabinet amendments that we will be using the electronic voting system this evening. I will announce when the voting system is activated and when voting on a particular matter is closed, uh, and when voting on this particular matter is closed. I do not have to remind members that they must be seated in their allocated positions to vote and that proxy voting is also not allowed. In the instance of a recorded or card vote being requested, the usual roll call of names will be accompanied by the activation and use of the electronic vote recording system. When announcing their voting choice, members are required to press the appropriate voting button. Voting choices will be displayed on the monitor screens in the form of a seating plan. At the conclusion of the vote, a summary screen will display the total votes cast and will list individual members' choices relating to the subject in question. If members are in agreement, we will be using this system for all votes of council this evening. This will require suspension of standing order 18. Do I have a mover and seconder? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Davis and Councillor Davis. Will members please indicate their support with a show of hands? Thank you, I believe that's unanimous. When progressing our business this evening, I will be adhering strictly to the time limits during this meeting. Please do not ask for more time, as I will have to refuse you. Now, at the ordinary, meeting, uh, ordinary council meeting on 12th of December, following a request from a member, I was advised that it is at the Mayor's discretion to allow personal statements and I express my belief that it is the tradition of this council for the Mayor to do so. I think it might be helpful to expand upon that by saying, where an elected member wishes to make a significant personal announcement, such as their resignation from a political group, or even their intention to resign from the council, I believe that although not covered by standing orders, it is both reasonable and traditional for the Mayor to allow them to do so and their statement should be treated with respect and heard in silence, without interruption from either within the chamber or from the public gallery. I also believe that traditionally there is no right of reply to a personal statement. For this meeting, I have received a request from Councillor Christine Meaden to be allowed to make a personal statement, so I now call Councillor Meaden. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Very good. Um, Thank you for giving me this opportunity. As everybody knows, I have been deselected by my board and will not be allowed to stand as the Labour candidate in the forthcoming elections. It has taken me since October to come to the decision on what to do and it has been one of the hardest decisions I had to make but feel it is the only choice that I have. So I have resigned the Labour Party with and I am finishing my term as an independent councillor still representing the people of Rock Ferry until May. <coughs> I've been a member of the Labour Party for 46 years. I've never missed a vote for the party, and that includes local and general elections, of which over the 46 years there's been a lot of elections. I've campaigned in all, from leafleting and knocking on doors, not just in my own ward, but right across the world. One of the things that really disappointed to me was when I received the reply from our regional office, after I sent them my resignation letter. It said, Thank you for your resignation, which is accepted, just let your leader know. No, one thank you for the 46 years that I've been a member. Sadly, that has changed the party that I joined all those years ago. I've had the honour of representing Cranley Ward and then through the boundary changes become the Rockbury Ward Councillor for 28 years. I became a Labour Councillor to help the residents in the ward that I live in and I personally believe as a good ward councillor that you should live in the ward that you represent. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my lovely family, two of them been my husband and my daughter are up in the gallery. Thank you for your support over these last few months because it's been a horrible time for me and it must have been horrible for you. I'd also like to thank a few members of the Labour Party, you know who you are, who have been really kind to me. And I'd especially like to thank Moira and Billy for all their support and to say that it's been a privilege to work with you both and we have achieved so much for our residents. Thank you to the opposition members also who have been very supportive of me and your kind words have meant a lot. Officers and staff have contacted me to say how sorry they are, but as the great Harold Wilson once said and I was lucky enough to be there, 
A week is a long time in politics, and things change so quickly. Boy, was he right. My biggest thanks go to the residents of Rock Ferry, who through them gave me the chance to be the mayor of Wirral, which was something I never thought I would ever achieve. This authority has fine traditions, one of which, when you first make your maiden speech for the first time, everybody from all parties gives you a round of applause. When someone has been in this chamber for a long time and makes what could be, for whatever reason, their very last speech, then the same happens. But I know sadly that no one in the Labour group will stand up and applaud me, as they've been told not to. And I find that the saddest thing, as I was a member of that group for 28 years. I also realise that everyone in this chamber has one thing in common, and that is we get one life. And what we do with that life is our choice. Some choose to be bullies and imitate, imi intimidate people. Others, like myself, try to help people. And finally, just to let everybody know, I will be standing in the local elections as a Rockstarry independent candidate. And I will give the residents their democratic right to vote for the candidate they want to represent them. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillors, we now consider item three on tonight's agenda, agenda papers, to discuss the Celtic Manor Resort. Given that the motions as presented are all on the same topic, and to help avoid repetition or duplication of debate, I am suggesting that Council debate all three motions as one in accordance with Council Standing Order 12 brackets 2. Do I have a proposal and seconder, please? Thank you, Councillor Phil Davis, Councillor George Davis. Is everyone agreed? Thank you. Your agenda packet, page one, includes the request for an extraordinary council meeting with the Conservative Notice of Motion included at page three. May I have a proposal and seconder, please? Councillor Blake, the formally moved, Councillor Jerry Ellis. Thank you. Thank you. Notice has also been given of two further motions shown at pages three to five of your agenda pack. May I have proposed and seconders, please? Councillor Phil Gilchrist to formally move and Councillor Alan Brain to formally second the Liberal Democrat motion. Number two of the agenda. Thank you, Councillor Gilchrist. A second, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Brain. And Councillor <coughs> Phil Davis to formally move and Councillor <coughs> Angela Davis to formally second the Labour motion number three in the agenda pack. Move, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. So, we now move to the Conservative motion, uh, motion notice. Councillor Blakely, you now have up to five minutes to speak to the motion. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Mr Mayor, when we submitted our original motion, we did so in the hope that this Council could instruct the Cabinet to withdraw this body in its entirety. But, unfortunately, we were disallowed by the Labour Government's insurance. When asked why I was told that the council exists only to make representations and to make certain high-level budget policy decisions, because almost all of the council's power lies entirely with the cabinet, that effectively leaves 56 members of all parties without a voice. So our motion is worded <coughs> in the strongest possible way, and hopes that those 56 members of all parties are able to recommend to the all-powerful cabal that this body, which has already wasted over a million of council taxpayers' money, is withdrawn. Mr Mayor, you and all the elected members will have received emails from the same evidence from all parts of the world, calling on all of us to protect our very special green belts. We've also received lots of emails specifically focusing on the potential loss of Bracken and Golf Course, and some, if not all, of it surrounding area. In addition, we are aware of a petition organised by Defend Our Green Spaces, currently standing at over 13,500 signatures, as well as a petition focused on opposing the Celtic Manor Resort, also known as the Hoylake Golf Resort, which also stands at over 13,500 signatures, along with a newly started petition of almost 1,000 signatures 
from the Green Peak Green Belt Action Group. And we also know that Councillor Brightwell has got a petition under which these thousand signatures. So it's clear from all those hundred green belts, the massive petitions, the people of Will are opposed to both the Celtic Manor Resort, which would designate green belts, and to losing any of our green open spaces and play fields. And while the local Labour campaign forum are listening, as are we on this side of the chamber, we need to make sure the cabinet is listening. And not just hearing Mr Mayor, but really listening. It appears the cabinet's are out of step with the local campaign forum, and they're certainly out of step with the public of will. We've repeatedly heard from the leader of the council that he wants to protect our green belts. We've also heard from many Labour councillors that they also want to protect our green belts. Not least of all, Councillor Brightmore, who appears to be want to, to be the saviour of our green belts. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr Mayor, if that is the case, it's not unreasonable for us to expect them to vote for our notes of motion. If they don't, then the public will rightly see them as meaningless words, broken promises, and hopefully they will be judged at the ballot box in May. Yes. Turning to the alternative motions, the Lib Dem motion is very much in line with ours, that rightly calls on Cabinet to withdraw from its golf resource, so we will support in that nation. However, the Labour motion is another kettle of fish. The Labour motion is designed to try to placate those Labour members who have shown they are on a different page than their leader and its cabinet. Their motion talks of receiving up to 40 million from one payments. <coughs> However, when questioned, the corporate director of business management states, we are not in a position to give specific amounts against individual parts of the deal until negotiations are complete and cabinet make a decision on the final proposal. The Labour motion also talks of sending the issue to a relevant overview screening committee. And we all know that whatever a screening committee says, their recommendations can be ignored. We only have to look at the Environment Committee on the 15th of January, which dealt with a public space protection proposal. Their recommendation was to scrap the PSPM. Yet here we are six weeks on, and a cabinet member has not carried out that committee's wishes. Given that, I would ask those disillusioned Labour members not to be sucked in to what can only be described as a very poor effort by Labour leadership to gather their support. Mr. Mr. Mayor, <coughs> in conclusion, I would say this. We as elected members, particularly the 56 back benches, whose voice can be heard here, have a responsibility to all our electors. We have a responsibility as guardians of our green belts. And we have a responsibility to our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, and the generations that follow us to protect the special green belts and our green land spaces. After all, once it has gone, it has gone forever. Do we, in this council chamber, really want to be seen as weak? to be seen as the councillors who will not stand up for those that follow us. Mr Mayor, I call on all the backbench councillors to make their voices heard tonight and tell the ten decision makers that this Celtic man of folly is just that, an expensive pipe cleaning that would harm our green bells and should be dropped immediately. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Now for the Liberal Democrat motion, Councillor Gilchrist, you have up to five minutes to speak to the motion. Thank you, Mr Mayor. In 2017, the leader of the Council, in an introduction, said the project would be a flagship development. He also said it was for globally significant tourism. I want to go back through some of the history. I want to go back to 2005 and 2006, because I really want to know what has changed. That's familiar refrain. What has changed? In 2005, the letter from the Northwest Development Association said planning policy issues could be an overriding constraint. <coughs> and if you go back to the Capital Simmons report on this project in 2006, it said in paragraph 43, 
This green land use designation is a major obstacle to the proposed development. They went on to say that overcoming Greenbelt policy will prove very difficult within the existing planning regime. So what has changed? In 2006, they also said in paragraph 44, the economics are such that the development cannot at the current time generate a sufficient return on investment. So what has changed? Because that's what we found out in 2017. The project is a culmination of a whole series of expressions of interest. In 2012, Mr. Mayor, 23 organisations were interested in it, but they gradually disappeared. By 2015, there were only five bids. By January 2014, there were four. By March 2014, only two were left. By May 2014, only the Jack Nicholas group were left. Mr. Mayor, in December 2017, Cabinet were asked to approve access to prudential borrowing. The Council had a commercial incompetence assessment. But even in the public report, it talked about the project they thought had an opportunity and potential to generate a significant return on investment, but only if the Council was prepared to back it up. The other thing that has changed is the timetable, Mr Mayor, because if the timetable was kept to, the planning decision would be made this June. The timetable has slipped. We're now told, and we now know, that there will be a substantial housing development. So I ask Labour members especially, whose houses are they? Who are they intended for? That money is not for people like any one of us, but for people who might well travel for miles move here from miles, but be high-priced houses well out of the reach of virtually everyone in the world. Yeah. Yeah. The owner of the project talks about it being currently cultivated land. In 2006, a report said it was generally low-quality farmland. Recent studies have disproved that. It actually is better. The Wirral Society report and various soil association studies suggest that the land is better. In December 2017, I asked about the growth company, and hopefully that council meeting is filmed, but I said, the growth company appears to be making good progress, but can the council's efforts be concentrated on that, rather than the golf resort project, which now seems to need a hefty loan from the council? So the one thing that has changed is the need for a hefty loan. We're left with a limited backer, we're left with one company, from another part of the country, but it is not the only competing pro project in the Northwest. Those of us who have studied the Bolton documents have seen an assessment running to over 300 pages with a website for the council saying there have been over 700 documents. Can we really divert our planning staff and limited planning resources to try and make a go of this project when we haven't got our local plan in place? I come back to the issue of housing. I hope there are members of this council who have read the exempt report from November 2017 on the Hoylake Gulf Resort produced by IPW. I would direct them, before they make any vote tonight, to turn that report up on their computers and to look at paragraph 810. Confidentiality prevents me from saying exactly what it says, but it's clear to me that if the council were not prepared to make this loan, then the project would be of even more doubtful value. So I ask members, looking ahead, if we have the chance to make use of prudential borrowing, that project money, that borrowing, should go for projects that benefit the people of Wirral. Yeah. 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 infrastructure for people here, and not a project that appears to me to have had its day. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Gilchrist. Now to the Labour motion. Councillor Phil Davis, you now have up to five minutes to speak to your motion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The motion moved by uh, the Labour group tonight simply asked the Council to hold off reaching a conclusion on the Celtic Manor. Of Hoylake scheme until we have all of the facts. 
It acknowledges that a range of issues need to be considered. Uh, there are concerns clearly relating to development on the green belts, uh, which ultimately will be decided through the planning process, and the planning committee will be the decision taker on that issue. And the funding package, which includes uh, a council loan to the developer, which will be a decision for cabinet, as we heard earlier on. But the scheme has a number of potential benefits, and I believe that we are duty bound to consider those benefits, including hundreds of new jobs, increased visitors to West Wirral and the borough as a whole, badly needed additional hotel capacity, increased, increased investment, increased investment in local businesses. Again, be quiet. I need to hear the leader. Increased investment in local businesses and valuable additional income to the council which can be used to fund public service <coughs> to replace the savage cuts to our budget by this Tory government. It's our so green belt you're Johnson, talking about. Faced with these issues, surely the sensible thing to do is to look at the evidence. We don't yet know the detail of the funding package. It's literally been with our officers uh, uh, just for a, a week or so. We don't yet know the precise environmental or economic impacts. This will be a subject of studies we do. by independent experts as part of the planning process. Mr Mayor, we heard today that the scheme being is, is being supported by a number of prominent local businesses in Hoylake. No. We should have oh. more oh. Well, I've got, the, uh, I've got the press release that they've issued. We it's have, got to be true then. We should have the courtesy to listen to these local businesses' views. And we've had a range of assertions made about everything from the integrity of the developers, the quality of the jobs created, the nature of the resort, uh, people say it's only about golf, and no local businesses will be benefiting. Mr Mayor, all of these issues are contested by the de developers and need to be scrutinised properly. So, our motion says that rather than express a view tonight based on partial information, and I have to say, in some cases, blatant scaremongering, we should, it. Yeah. We should, it's we you should to take our time morning. And you miss information to the public. Quiet in the gallery, I need to hear the leader. Rather than rushing to any decision before we know the facts, we should take our time, consider facts and the evidence. This is best done using the scrutiny process we have available, where information can be tested rigorously and witnesses for and against the scheme can be questioned in public. I don't believe there is any downside to allowing backbenchers, who Craig Council Blakely said uh, need to uh, uh, hear this case, to have the opportunity to do that. And I can think of plenty of examples, Chris, of scrutiny reports that have come to Cabinet and we've supported their recommendations. My fear, Mr Mayor, is if we say this scheme should be abandoned without proper due diligence, it will send a message to would-be investors that Wirral is closed for business. And the danger is that people will go elsewhere. When are you going Even elsewhere? Mr Mayor, if we close off a source of new income to the council, we risk running out of money once our government grant disappears completely in 2021. And this will just increase the likelihood that we will join the ranks of councils like Northamptonshire who have gone bankrupt. Mr Mayor, we had a duty to take this proposal seriously. All this motion that we're moving tonight is proposing is that should be done by the scrutiny. A well tried and tested uh, uh, method of scrutinising these issues. So Mr Mayor, I would be happy to move that motion. The Green Belt is part of the tourist industry. Canada is too close. Thank you, Councillor Davis. So we now come to speakers. Are there any members who wish to speak to the motions? Councillor David, Councillor David Ellison. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it is clear that a large number, uh, sorry, a large number of generic and personally addressed emails and letters have been received by the majority of our members here tonight. Without exception, the communications that I have received have dem demanded that all councillors of whatever political persuasion should support cancellation of these proposals for a variety of valid reasons. Clearly, the invasion of the Green Belt by inappropriate development is one of those major reasons. But, coupled with this, and as I have repeatedly stated at both council and committee meetings over recent months, this is a monumentally flawed textbook example of how not 
to proceed with development of the nature, uh, uh, particularly from a uh, financial perspective. Yes. Yes. I'm personally involved in the type of partnership between local authorities and developers for well over 30 years, it is clear that basic mistakes have been made from the start of this whole process. Yes. In my experience, which is considerable, partnership developments with the nation have always shared the same format. That is that both parties to the development share pound for pound the preliminary cost of developing the concept up until the development actually being approved by planning committee or whatever, or going ahead to go ahead or to be aborted. In this bizarre case, it appears that the local authority has and is funding the whole process directly or indirectly until further notice using income from council taxpayers. Very this true. even included using the unusual step, apparently, of lending funds to the developer who apparently also does not have access to sufficient funds to cover, cover their share of the development costs. Yeah, it's yeah. a disgrace financially, quite honestly. Yeah. This proposed development is quite clearly a very risky business. Yeah. My yes. major concern, based on years of experience, is that the appropriate and adequate due, due, due diligence into the financial credibility and viability of the developing team should have been carried out way before ordering any commitment to proceed. There has still not been any, any of this due diligence of a profit bid that I'm used to doing done. And this leaves the council taxpayers fund an unacceptable risk of partial or total loss of revenue. Assuming that the council does have the senior officer-led financial checks and balances it purports to have, there must be an urgently and transparently engaged in acting upon this due diligence, due diligence uh, exercise. Because without that being done, the rest of it is a total, unadulterated farce. In conclusion, Mr Mayor, in addition to the wholesale abuse of the Green Belt, this proposed development is monumentally flawed from a financial perspective. It should be cancelled before any more council taxpayers' funding is wasted on it. I so support the motion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I actually, slightly contradictory um, words, you, you were saying due diligence, but our resolution talks about the actual due diligence, the financial reform being made available, open and in public, to, to members of the scrutiny committee and a wider audience. So, so in, what, what are you afraid of? If you're so right, why are you so afraid that shame. financial report shouldn't be held in, in, in the public domain? I have to say, uh, it, is, it is a difficult, this is a difficult development. There's no doubt about it, it's difficult. It's got lots of different ingredients that others developments haven't had. Green Belt being one, quite clearly uh, an emotive issue, and we take that on board. Environmental issues, we take those on board, we, we take them seriously, and obviously the financial issues. But we look at our history, that have been good and bad developments. I, I, I was looking up the other day about the development of Birkenhead Park. Bedford Park was actually built by Paxton to encourage the sale of the large properties around the oh, uh, that, was, that was all those years ago. These type of models do exist. I'm not saying this is the right model, but all I'm saying is this is something that business are interested in. There are three leading companies still involved in this, this business. If we do not do our job properly and open it in the public and then come to a sensible decision, then business world will look at us in disdain. What we, we had, and I don't know anyone else has had it, Celtic Manor have presented some parts of their history and what they do and what they did in Newport. It seems as though it's the best thing since sliced bread in Newport. That might not be the case for Riddle, but at least they need, or someone needs to hear the case. If you haven't heard Richard, all the three cases being put forward and the opposition all in the same environment, how can you possibly come to a decision? One decision I do regret that's been made tonight, and that's the, the, the decision by Chris Mead. Uh, I think it's a wrong decision, and I will continue to oppose any party that is not Labour. But I still want to be, and continue to be, my friend. Okay. <laughs> Councillor Dave Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> Look at the comments that were made earlier on. Council Blake was talking about the way the council.
advance on the drum now through the leader, strong leader and the cabinet. Uh, the cabinet now is saying they want in their resolution just to go to the select committee so that we can scrutinise everything. I've been on the council long enough, Mr Mayor, but I've been on working parties, all party uh, working parties have made recommendations to cabinet. I know at least two that are uh, part of the recommendations that we made in the select committee, all party agreements being refused by the cabinet. And that's the one thing that really concerns me more, more than anything else. I, I find that um, environmental issues, green health, are all relevant. But the most important thing uh, for me is, is the use of uh, revenue by this council to move this project forward that's been presented by uh, the, Labour, the Labour group. In our amendment, we say that money should be used to support developments in the, in the, uh, the brown, brown land developments so that we can create yeah. houses for people who really need them. And they are social houses, and that is in conjunction with the housing associations, housing associations and any other body that will pre present uh, affordable housing to the majority of our community. We know it's been a major problem housing uh, nationally. Uh, we won't go into the history of it going back to Mr. Thatcher's right to buy and the loss of revenue to the local authorities and the changes that have followed on from that through uh, other uh, governments. The things that really do, do stand out is that we need to make sure that decisions are made by the council are for the benefit of all the people of the world, yeah, yeah. not the benefit uh, of the cabinet. I just say uh, in the last comment, Mr. Uh, Mayor, there was a, a very relevant song in, in the 60s by a, a, a singer called Johnny Mitchell, no relation, but it, it, it's a, a, a pertinent song because you don't know what it got until it's gone. We know what it's gone. We know what it's Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, once again, the Conservatives have found it necessary to call a special council meeting to address the issue that is blighting the lives of the residents of Wirral, this odious proposal to build on our precious green belt land. This Labour administration consistently uses inaccurate and overblown statistics on the borough's housing needs to justify its requirement to build on green belt land, even though they know full well that the world's population is in decline and future housing needs for the borough can be adequately met by bringing back into use the estimated four to 6,000 empty housing stock, the Wirral Water Schemes and utilising brownfield sites. Yes. 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 All the councils in this chamber can testify by the number of emails they receive from concerned residents from all over the borough that this issue has visited untold <coughs> misery and despair on our residents whose mental and physical well-being is being damaged by the prospect of the erosion of our precious green belt on this leisure peninsula. This Labour administration is using the easy option, as I have said before, of generating income from the council tax base of large executive homes on Greenbelt. There will be no affordable homes built on Greenbelt land. They ignore the concerns of residents in Hoylake because they perceive no political loss in that area. The loss of Greenbelt land affects not only those residents that live in the area, but everyone that visits from other places for rest and relaxation. We all know that there is no need to build on the green belt. And on that basis, I would urge all councillors in this chamber to vote against it for the sake of all our residents. We are the servant of our residents, not the master. And the yeah, Labour yeah, administration yeah, yeah. should remember this fact. We will not have an opportunity to reverse any decision to build on green belt. Once built on, green belt is gone forever. 